a much better effort tonight for the Toronto Raptors, but yet another heartbreaking loss, this time to the Utah Jazz. 115-112 is your score. The Raptors record now 17-24. and Hello, everyone, and welcome to Raptors Nightcap. Randy Urban alongside Sherman Hamilton, Leo Routens, the birthday boy, and Paul Jones. Uh, fellas, I'll start with you, Sherman. Oh. Hey, oh, whoa, whoa. Oh. Leonard. What is that? <laughs> I'm a little get, parched. Are you going to share that? I think we all need a little bit of that. If I don't share that, I'll be dead. <laughs> uh, in, in a couple of ways, right? Uh, in a yeah. couple of ways, oh. right, Leonard? I think I hurt my shoulder. <laughs> sure, I'll start with you. Um, you know, you really can't fault Pascal. You just feel for him uh, on that last possession. He did everything he could. Pass was a little low. Pulled it up. Great shot. Got it off well. A touch too strong. Just tough, though. It's tough. Yeah, it was a tough, tough shot to, to get up. But, I mean, he still got a good look. That looked eerily similar to the play that got OG wide open on that three in the bubble, didn't it? Mm -hmm, but yeah. there's no question that, you know, Pascal, he's just kind of been snake bitten when it comes to those game winners. That shot did everything but go in when you think about how many times it went around the hoop. But for Pascal, this is part of the process. You know, he had a better game than he did the last time. We're seeing more Pascal things happen. So you just hope that with, you know, a couple more reps, what I think the next game will be very important for the Raptors. And I think Pascal can get back to closer to who he is and, and hopefully shots like that will go down for him. Yeah, well, Leo, how do you feel then if you're Pascal after something like that? Obviously, nobody looks at that and says that's his fault or anything like that. But personally, you know he wants that shot. You know he wants to make one of those. How, how does he sort of carry himself after this? Well, I, I think he's kind of showed us the blueprint to that, right? I mean, he's, he's, he's missed a few of these other ones. And here's what, here's what I would be looking at. If the ball, if the game comes down the stretch, if Pascal starts disappearing, hiding, not wanting the ball, mm -hmm. you know what the what the answer to that question is. If Pascal is looking for the ball, not afraid to take the next one and make a play down at the end, then that tells you where his head's at. He's he's in it, right? He's he's mm -hmm. not afraid. He's going to keep taking it. And like Sturm said, you know, it's been a snake bite, right? I mean, hopefully one of these is going to go down, then another one's going to go down, and no one's going to remember the ones that did. But right now, it's just it's just getting over the hump. But I give a lot of credit to a guy that's not afraid to take it, doesn't get discouraged, and comes right back and, and wants the ball. And, and guys, sorry, sorry, one quick yeah, yeah. addition. We know Nick Nurse knows he's going to need Pascal. So what yeah. does he do? He draws up a play that's going to give Pascal a chance to see it go in potentially. And that kind of confidence is going to bode well down the stretch. Well, and, and just to, I was going to tag both of you with that. There's a psychological element to this too, Randy, because if Nick decides to go away from Pascal, then he's saying something to him as well. Mm -hmm. I, I, look, Sherm talked about it. The play was well drawn up. Uh, you know, Utah took that foul. I don't know if I would have taken that foul. Maybe Raptors make, make them do something on the fly, react to it. I, I thought once the foul was taken, they, had, they did a great job in um, working on those special situation plays without a timeout. And as Sherm said, it looked like the OG play. Same side, the screens were there, catch was a little tough. And, and to your point about Pascal, he's showing some resiliency here. He's not blushing, he's not going away. He's going to keep taking that shot and eventually he's gonna get one down. I, it, we, we talk about the last shot. There was a stretch there where Donovan Mitchell took over. And mm -hmm. to me, that's where the game was decided because a minute and a half, you're up five, and this guy decides he's going to go crazy. Well, sure. Like, what happened there then? You know, the Raptors, they get down 10 in the fourth. Great job. Great shot making. Great plays from you know, seemingly everybody that was out there. You go up five. And then, as Jonesy said, Mitchell takes over. Is that, is that just not locking in on him? Is that something that they did? or? No, Donovan Mitchell's been that good all season. So it's not a surprise that that Donovan Mitchell was able to get his offensive game off. I mean, he's been torching the league all year. Uh, and I think when you talk about the Raptors on the other end of the floor, you know, they had some shots that maybe they could have played a bit differently. You know, when you look at the Pascal drive on Rudy Gobert, a mm -hmm. difficult shot, you know, Kyle Lowry had a shot with his heels on the three point line. 
If it goes in, fine, but it doesn't go in. And then Fred shoots a deep three. Now, all those shots had the potential of going in, but when you look at what kind of transpired after those shots, then you question those things. But guys, we've seen Donovan Mitchell do this all season long, so there's no surprise that, that he was able to execute down the stretch. I, I just want to jump in. Um, he made a comment a while back about, you know, Utah, we're Utah and we don't get calls and we're not sexy. And well, they got the calls tonight with the free throw disparity being 41 to 14. And for the people out there, we don't always get the votes because of the way the things go. I think you have to have Donovan Mitchell in some kind of consideration for the MVP. I, I don't know if he's at the top of the ladder or where he is on one of those runs, but listen, this guy's maybe the best player on the best team in the NBA. Mm -hmm. He has to get some kind of consideration. I don't think you can just summarily dismiss him. And he showed us tonight. He had a personal 7-0 run when his team was down five to vault them into the lead. Give me the ball. And this is what great players do. And this kid is developing and becoming a great player in this league. Leo, I want to go back to that that shot that Pascal took on Gobert that um, Sherm was talking about. And for me, initially, I was like, you know what? I'm glad he didn't take that three just because I want to see guys go to the rim in that situation. Now, is there a time where just because it's Gobert, maybe you take that three or do you go at him even harder? I think he could have gone a little further and, and really put the pressure on him uh, defensively. Yeah, I mean, I think with Gobert, you want to, you really want to sell the three. You want him to come out, you want him to bite, and you want to drive it hard. And not, those are one of the plays. And again, I don't know if he physically has that strength and stamina now at the end of a game just coming back, but that's one of those where you want to take it to the rim and try to dunk it and try to get fouled. Uh, but when you're not on balance, you don't have your legs underneath you and you try to shoot a shot over Gobert, he's going to get it. I mean, this guy is blocking everybody's shot in the NBA. So uh, he's just too big and long for that. So it's got to be very decisive and very strong when you look to attack him. In some way, somehow, you've got to get to his body. Well, just look how Chris Boucher had Rudy Gobert on his heels the whole night. Chris Boucher comes out early, attacks in the paint. Then Boucher starts to gap him. So Chris knocks down a few threes on him. And then the second half, Boucher attacks, gets a lay-in. Gobert backs off. He knocks down a three again. So he had Rudy Gobert guessing the whole time. So there is a way to play it, but you have to be confident that you're going to make and take those threes. And I don't think Pascal, as Leo said, is there yet because physically he's probably not all there. But mm. if he is, you can keep Gobert off balance if you're making shots from the perimeter. Jonesy, back to you. You know, the good thing is that um, you know, this game looked different than the last one, you know, yeah. from, from all facets, right? There's some positive here that you can take from the performance, both offensively and defensively. Yeah, there are, there are positives. I mean, you get, you got your lineup back and they're starting mm -hmm. to work together and they did a really good job against the, you know, the, the NBA's best team. All that being said, it's still an L it's a, it's unfortunately the seventh straight and, and, you don't have time for moral victories right now. you got to start putting notches in the left-hand column. So I'm sure they'll review, they'll make adjustments to little things. But, you know, we talked about it. They've got the lead with a minute and a half, a two-possession lead with a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. And it's about executing at both ends. Do you take the ball out of Mitchell's hands? Do you, you know, uh, Leo and Sherm both talked about the shot that Gobert blocked. Do you make sure you get into the body of the shot blocker? go for a dunk. If there's any space, Gobert's going to block that. Those are the little things now when you get close to the, in, in the stretch and get close to winning. Those are the little details, the fine details that you need to tweak. It did look different, Randy. It is promising, but they still need to get in the left-hand column with wins. Yeah, hey, Joji, uh, you know, one, one of the things, if you listen to Nick before the game, there's a, probably a little frustration uh, in the words he said, but one of the things he said, you know, we've had some really good games against some really good teams. And tonight you could put that game, this game in that category, right? Utah, as you said, best record in the NBA. But if you can do that against the best teams, you got to do it against everybody else, right? And right. that's right now what's been biting the Raptors. They have to have that same effort against everybody they play. So hopefully now, if you understand that's what you got to do, that's how you have to play. You got to get that effort but hopefully you get guys in better shape, better rhythm. And now you have the execution and the details. 
but you, that's how you're going to get your wins. That's how you're going to start putting those little streaks together. You know, it's not that hard, you know, to play when you got good players to play good against the good teams. Mm-hmm. You got to play good against everybody if you want to get back into this thing. Sure. And when you look at the uh, players that have recently missed time from COVID, who, who stood out to you? Who impressed you the most? You know what? I think OG, I, I thought OG's timing and rhythm was, was pretty impressive for his first game back. You know, the first shot he took was that kind of soft 14, 16 foot jump shot on the baseline. One of the tougher shots and, and he hit it and it was all net. And he just looked like his shot seemed very fluid. It didn't look mm-hmm. like he was trying to aim it. And that's a great sign for a guy who's missed that many games that we don't know how COVID impacts everybody. It's different for everybody. So you just hope that all of these guys that are coming back from COVID just do what they need to do to get healthy first. And then we'll talk more about basketball. But if you're talking about tonight, I thought OG looked very, very good for a guy that missed that amount of games. Jonesy? I, he would have been the guy that I would target to. Although, look, I, I look at the numbers. Uh, Fred had a little bit of a drop off in the second half, but, you know, he looked more like himself 17, 6, and 9. He was only 6 of 15 from the floor, but he looked more like himself. And uh, OG, though, it, his his the, his disposition, the demeanor with which he plays, just kind of is is calm, controlled, and you look up and he's doing great things. And listen, that was just the offense. He made some terrific plays on the defensive end, guarding mm-hmm. guys on switches, moving his feet, uh, challenging, rebounding. Uh, it, it's good to have him back. Raptors just need a little more. They're very close right now, Randy. They're very close. They got to get over the hump though. Unfortunately, we got to stop you there, guys. Leo, I know you wanted the last word because it's your birthday, but if you, if you got five seconds, hit us. Nah, I got nothing. <laughs> Happy birthday, Leo. Happy birthday, birthday Leo. Old man. Appreciate it, fellas. Appreciate, Appreciate it, buddy. It. Thanks, guys. See I you next things time. things to do. Thanks for watching. You can click to watch our last episode or to subscribe to the Toronto Raptors YouTube channel so you don't miss an episode.